what is going on, you guys? So, yeah, I just got back from the game. I had to take, you know, public transportation there. I don't have a car, but I was able to go to this one and see it in person. And I will say, this one, I know the scoreboard looks pretty embarrassing, but at the same time, this game wasn't as painful as the scoreboard shows. And why is because this team was very competitive through, uh, you know, most of this game. You know, a few late scores by Stanford kind of padded the score and, you know, just, there are just some mistakes by UCLA. First off, you know, that was like the per perfect way to start a game. They played right into their game plan, tried to kill a lot of time off the clock and score a touchdown. And unfortunately, they didn't get in the end zone yet. I think we had first and goal at the one, and then we had four straight run plays, which, you know, I questioned the play call in there. I, I understood... Now, you know, watching throughout later the game, I understood why Neuheisel went for it, because our kicker, Jeff Locke, was missing PATs, which later in the game, but I thought we could have done some pass plays somewhere. I know UCLA was a little scared of the pick and the interception. I think uh, he learned his mistake from the Texas game, not to throw the ball too much, but you got to try at least one throwing play, at least one. got to try that somewhere. Didn't do it, so then Stanford takes over, drives all the way down the field, and scores a touchdown. All of a sudden, it's only 7 to nothing after the first quarter because we killed so much clock. And then, suddenly, another drive after uh, early three and out by, Stanford, or by UCLA. There's another run. Couldn't, could not stop him on third down. It took forever to finally get a third down stop. That was, that was pretty painful. Uh, and then there was a fumble. I think Brijo was hit from behind. You know, Our offensive line had trouble uh, protecting a few times Brijo. And Bre whenever Brijo was running for his life, he was screwed. Uh, this guy could not handle it very well when I was watching. It was pretty rough to see. But it was kind of a nice spark. Right after the field goal, ra rather than the defense quitting, they actually held Stanford to a field goal, which was kind of a miracle after that turnover. You know, they were on the field pretty consecutively. And then uh, Joseph Faria gets the 12-yard touchdown pass. Pretty good. Pretty good drive, I gotta say. That two-minute drill was run well. I, I thought they should have rushed it a bit more, but they were nicely slowing the clock down, so Stanford didn't have time. Nicely going on some third-down conversions. Uh, Brijo did make some nice passes from here and there. So it was 17-7 to at halftime, and you're thinking, okay, maybe there's some small hope. But, uh, of course, Stanford is the much better team. I'm not going to deny that. And uh, it just kind of showed the first couple plays in the third quarter. If you were still in the restroom or something, and you missed it, you would have missed it. A fast touchdown, just right over the middle. Our secondary had trouble over the middle, and uh, they kicked their ass right there, right out of the gate. But then suddenly UCLA answers on its own drive, and it was a nice, you know, once again, some nice third down conversions. They passed when they needed to. You know, unfortunately, you can't put the game in Brijo's hands where he passes the ball majority of the time. I think the coaching staff understood that. So then all of a sudden, UCLA got a, a stop. That was a miracle. In the second half, we got a couple stops, but the offense did nothing about it. And the second time, uh, this is pretty much what sealed the game. Uh, it was 24 to 13, and then I think one of our guys fumbled the ball. I, I couldn't tell. I think it was Taylor Embry or something fumbled the ball. But uh, the uh, crucial turnover there. He should have fair caught the ball. Whoever was doing it, you're supposed to fair catch the ball, and he wasn't aware of that. He wanted to be Superman, so. He fumbled. Uh, Stanford eventually takes advantage of it with a wildcat play. Thank goodness, uh, a wildcat happened there. And uh, so, so after the wildcat play, uh, that pretty much sealed it. It's 31-13. UCLA got a nice little touchdown afterward. Uh, you know, it was nice the fact that I got to see some scoring. You know, when I was at Cal last year, as you know, that was a horrible, embarrassing blowout that I had nothing to cheer about. Only one touchdown, but. You know, this time I got to see, okay, we got some hope, maybe, because we were within, we were within two scores with 13 minutes to go. But, uh, you know, Stanford, very efficient once again on third downs, just very clutch. They, they were killing us on third down conversions. It was pretty amazing there. So that, you know, I pretty much sealed it, and I, you know, you know that's just how the game goes. Uh, Stanford, of course, is a national title contender. You know, they were missing their linebacker, so UCLA offense wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And they were able to run the ball, able to get some conversions. Their secondary is very suspect. I think if a team is very good at passing down the road, Stanford is vulnerable to the pass. So they, if Brito is able to throw respectable numbers against Stanford, there's some, 
if there's a pass happy team, they can pass on Stanford. They're vulnerable. Uh, of course, UCLA being kind of uh, incompetent made some mistakes. There was, besides going for it on fourth down and failing, there was, uh, and some missed PATs because of our punter getting some hiccups. Just those two fumbles really uh, also ruined the game. We couldn't force a turnover on our own. Uh, as I said before, third down conversions by Stanford was really what was owning us. And, uh, you know, the coverage, yeah, the, and the second half it helped. But it, where was that earlier? Uh, we needed those third down stops earlier. And uh, the coverage was kind of soft. All you had to do was throw in the middle, and you got some, some plays right there. So, But for the most part, you know, the only thing I'm going to blame is some of the defensive coaching. Uh, I could understand why the offense did its play calling the way they did because of the personnel we have. But the the defense, goodness, the defensive coaching, um, it's it's ugly. Uh, the defense coverage, some of the tackling got better. The run defense, you know, when you were going to the outside, uh, Stephen Taylor was off to the race at the time, and that was uh, scary. But overall, uh, I wasn't that mad the way that this game ended. And I know people will just laugh at the scoreboard, but this. It was a fun experience. Uh, on my other channel, I'll upload the sights and sounds when I went to the game. Uh, you know, shout out to my, a couple of my friends who provided the ride and uh, take it for me. So, thank you, everyone. And, uh, you know, what do you think of the game? We got, uh, you know, another tough test uh, next week. It'll be very interesting when we go against Washington State, who, by the way, got a Pac-12 win uh, already in the season. Congrats to them. So, it's going to be a tough test. But go Bruins, as always. Uh, had a good time despite the result, and uh, we'll see you all later. Go Bruins. Stanford was just a much better team. <laughs>